Guys, we need to talk about Eastern Serbia. If you're new here, cheers, Jiva Lee. This is Wando. I'm an American chick who lives in Serbia and loves traveling around the Balkans and making videos about it. And if you follow me on Instagram this past summer slash fall, you probably noticed that I did some epic, epic road trips through Great Fortress Road of Eastern Serbia. Okay, no, nobody actually calls it that. But this road trip is so epic that I do not understand why Serbia tourism isn't marketing it as Great Fortress Road of Eastern Serbia, where you just follow the Danube East towards Romania and you hit the most amazing towns and sites and destinations and fortresses all within like 30 to 45 minutes of each other. So there's Golubac, Smederevo, Ram, Veliko Gradište. I love saying those two words together, it literally makes me horny. <laughs> Kladovo, the Iron Gates of Jerdap, and the Decibalis rock structure, which is technically on Romanian soil. It's a Romanian destination, but you can see it clearly and perfectly and the best view from a Serbian river cruise. So I'll link to any cruise, rent a car, whatever I mentioned, resources um, in the description below as I go through this video. There's really so much more that I didn't even get to see. So I'll link to a blog post that I have on my blog in the description that lists other destinations that you can check out. But let's get into it. These seven places that I think you have to see. Starting with Smederevo. <laughs> Smederevo is a great place to start your road trip because it's only about an hour away from Belgrade. I looked on Discover Cars website and found the cheapest rental car that I could find. So I linked to Discover Cars in the description. Now Smederevo, just like pretty much every Serbian town and city, has a beautiful main pedestrian road, really nice pleasant bars and restaurants with outdoor seating at pretty cheap prices. But of course the main attraction is the fortress. Smederevo Fortress was built uh, between 1427 to 1430 on the orders of the ruler at the time, Despot Juraj Brankovic. This fortress was attacked many times and it always withstood all of the sieges. It was attacked, even bombed in World War II, and it's still so freaking beautiful. It's very well intact. I fell in love with this fortress because it is one of the most well-preserved, if not maybe the most well-preserved fortresses I've come across in all of my Balkans travels. There's this beautifully preserved court known as the small town, which during that time, that's where the nobility would gather. Like I kind of felt like I was on a film set. There's even a moat outside. Can you get any cooler than that? So the logistics of Smedarevo is parking is free, freaking amazing, and you have to pay a small entrance fee. Next stop is Ram. So Ram, gotta roll that R. <laughs> Ram is located in the municipality of Veliko Gradište. Got all the Raz, I love it. Ram was constructed in 1483 when its location was used as an artillery fort by the Ottoman Sultan Bayezid II. I have no idea how to pronounce Turkish Ottoman words, so I have no idea if I'm saying that right. But yeah, by his orders, it was constructed to be used as a defense against the Hungarians, although it is disputed because the earliest records of Ram Fortress actually date back to 1128. AD, when the Byzantines army defeated the Hungarians in the area. I don't even know where to go. Like, there's so many random pathways. It's cool. <laughs> oh. It's also pretty well preserved, which is bizarre because this fortress is not marketed at all. 
I only heard about it in 2019 and I had already been living in Serbia for two years, so that's insane. Ram was really nice because it's right on the water, so you can walk down these stairs and you'll be right on the river. There's these cute little docks that you can walk through. As for the logistics of Ram, the parking is free, but you do, of course, have to pay a small entrance fee. Last cool thing I'll say about Ram is once you get to Ram, that is when the Danube becomes essentially the border between Serbia and Romania. So as you're driving eastward, you'll have Serbia on your right and Romania on your left. Next is the town of Veliko Gradiste, which is the sexiest name of a town ever. Veliko Gradiste. Anyway, this is one of the most underrated destinations in Serbia that I have come across. There's so many beautiful places that you'll see like this along your drive as you get to this part of Serbia. It's absolutely beautiful. There's so many kind of canals and waterways and you can see the beautiful small mountainous hills of Romania off in the distance. So this is actually where I stayed for the night because I did like a two day road trip. Veliko Gradiste was nicely 45 minutes to an hour between like every single fortress. So it was just a great place to stay for the night. And I found the cutest guest house that was clean and nice and modern with like the nicest host ever. This is Slobodan, he's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Who made me breakfast in the morning and gave me like free Serbian spirits I'd never tried before that are really yummy. Vishnia. Vishnia. Rakia? Liker. So yummy. I found the guest house on booking website. When you're traveling to places where there aren't hotels or hostels, Booking.com always has guest houses, so I'll link to that in the description for Veliko Gradiše as well as for all the other destinations. So as you continue driving towards Golubac, which is the next destination, you will reach the widest part of the Danube. And it is so beautiful because it looks kind of like being by the sea or at least like a very, very, very large lake. It is stunning. I highly recommend to pull over to the side of the road and just take it in. It's so lovely. Next up is Golubac, probably the most iconic fortress in Serbia. It does not disappoint. Here it is. Whoa! These epic, epic mountains. <laughs> it looks like a fairy tale. It's just so beautiful. And it's beautiful from every angle. <laughs> so historical records first mention Golubac in 1335, but it was built before that, many years before that, so we're still not sure when it was actually built. But we do know that it was used as fortification housing for Hungarian garrison during the 14th century. The logistics of Golubac is there is a parking fee. So the guy just told me that it's 600 dinars to park and get a ticket and all that tickety touristy stuff. And there's different ticket prices depending on which zone you want to go to. And by zone, I mean tower. So there's like a zone number that's allocated to a certain tower. Some zones don't allow children. Uh, some zones only allow adults who have certain safety equipment and you must go with a guide. So check the website. I've linked it in the description. Check the website before you go there. So the next destinations are Kladovo, Jerdap, and the Iron Gates. So this was a separate trip that I went on with two other friends of mine. We went through a private tour company that's called 2044. I'll link to it in the description because they offer personalized tours. So you pick the places you want to go and you have someone that just drives you around to all the places. And one of my closest friends, Nicola, is actually one of the main operators for 2044. So of course I'm biased. <laughs> so you can check them out in the description. So the first stop for us was the Iron Gate. Now you can see the Iron Gates from Jerdap National Park. You don't have to actually go to, like go on to the river or anything. But me and my friends wanted to do the river cruise because we wanted to see 
different stops along the cruise like that's Tabalas. So we found a cruise online, I'll link to it in the description because I forget the name, but it was 15 euros per person for two hour cruise and it was amazing. This place is so like magnificent. Oh my God. People always ask me why I love the Balkans and like this is why I love the Balkans. It's so freaking gorgeous. <laughs> and they have beautiful people in the Balkans too. <laughs> Next stop is Desabalas giant rock sculpture. <laughs> For any of you Game of Thrones fans out there, seeing this on the river cruise kind of made me feel like I was Tyrion and Jorah Mormont when they were going down that river where the stone men were, or like even they're like rolling up to Bravos and there's that giant like statue or something. It was just so freaking epic. So as I said before, Desabalis is on Romanian soil. It is a Romanian destination. If you're planning to go to Romania, there is a bridge on the Romanian side where you can stop and walk on the bridge and take pictures. So who was Desabalas? <laughs> he was the last king of Dacia, reigning between 87 and 106 AD. And he fought against the Roman Empire to preserve the independence of what is now present day Romania. And I found out that this was only recently constructed between 1994 and 2002, I think. Sorry, 2004 and it was commissioned by a nationalist Romanian businessman named Iosif Constantin Dragan. <laughs> the last stop on the Great Fortress Road trip of Eastern Serbia was Kladovo. We stopped there on our way back to Belgrade. It's so beautiful. The water's glistening. It's the most beautiful vibe and energy. So yeah, we stopped there for a late lunch, which was so yummy. I think I had like pastrimka, which is river fish. And yeah, we ate a lot of stuff. <laughs> I really wished we could have spent more time there because Kladovo actually has some beaches. Now, I didn't get to check them out, but they looked pretty decent, especially in a landlocked country like Serbia, you know? Next time I venture out to Eastern Serbia, I will spend more time in Kladovo for sure. So guys, that's gonna end this video. I hope you could feel the epicness of traveling through Eastern Serbia by watching this video. Don't forget to check out my blog post where I list other destinations that I didn't get to. Don't forget to check out the links I mentioned for the resources I talked about. I hope that this video was very helpful for you guys and I hope that you're excited to check out Eastern Serbia. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers and Jivili again. Bye.